Let me tell you something. The chairs were left wanting because as soon as the first beat have hit, he took off his jacket and was hitting me for sure. I was like, oh, Alden, you got this in you, man. <laughs> Welcome, my brother. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Hello, hello. I'm sipping the best tea in the city. I can't believe it. Wow. Uh, what a moment here. Yeah? What a moment. What a moment. Tell me about when you got that call. Uh, I was like, no way. So I remember Tato called and like, hey, it's Tato here <laughs> from Kaya Fam. Yeah. Um, want to invite you to, you know, top 10 at 10 with um, Tibos on Kaya. I'm like, no, man. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, me? N- uh, me? And she's like, yes, yes, you. Wow. And then I just thought of uh, watching watching the show when it was still on Mzansi Magic That's as right. well. Yeah, like yeah. wow! Now I've made it. Now I'm gonna <laughs> give him my top ten songs. <laughs> Already we got dragged last night. Like yeah. oh, you're not even gonna play the ten songs. Yes, you're right. You're not gonna play the ten songs. Ta 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 ta. So I don't wanna give it uh, a cliffhanger. No, um, we will list the songs he chose. So yeah. I'm sure you can uh, pick a few that you you know are in common with you. Mm-hmm. And we'll do that. Saint Pierre. Yes. What's that? Um, Saint Pierre is the surname, um, uh, and I'm coloured. People, a lot of people don't know that, by the way. Yeah, I'm coloured because oh. uh, clear lang van van Vialcoma, van die Freistad. Is it? Yeah, yeah, because van die Freistad af. Um, so my family are descendants of Corsa and Irish people. Oh, yes, and that's where the Saint Pierre comes from. It was a bit of a debate in the family as well, like how okay. do you pronounce it? Yeah. Do you pronounce it as Saint Pierre, or do you pronounce it Saint Pierre, or do you pronounce it Saint Pierre? Yes. So um, I was born in Valcom in the Free State. Yeah. And in Valcom it is Saint Pierre. Oh. Yes, uh, they pronounce it Saint Pierre. When we moved to Soweto in Orlando, my aunt, who then gave me this entire history of where the surname comes from, um, and also our lineage, was like, no, you don't pronounce it that way. It is pronounced St. Pierre. And she has a picture of my great-grandmother uh, from Ireland wow. on uh, on our wall at the time, um, Auntie Enna. They used to call her Auntie Enna. Yeah. And she says, do you think that woman would say St. Pierre? <laughs> 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 Look at her. Do you think that she would say Saint Pierre? Yeah, no, it's yeah. not Saint Pierre. It is Saint Pierre. So I've I've stuck to the Saint Pierre. But sometimes you may just bump into some family members who pronounce it as Saint Pierre. Did you go back as far as going to Ireland? No, I haven't as yet. It's something that I really want to explore. I can um, imagine, yeah. When I remember when I jo- when I joined Power FM. I told them that one of the things that I want to do is to understand exactly where I come from. That's right. um, because I also had that bit of that conflict around <clears throat> are you black? Are you not black? You're not you're not black enough to be black, but mm. you're not white enough to be white. Um you're right in between. Yeah. But what has brought me to where I am today? Um something that I wanted to do, um and hopefully I do get the time to do it. So is it is it an is it an internal dialogue you have? Or is this a dialogue that society imposes on you, just like we did with Tyler? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think everybody wants to belong. Every single mm. person wants to belong in the sense of belonging. And that sense of belonging speaks to identity as well. Mm. And when you speak about identity in South Africa, it becomes very, very complex because of the history of this country. Yeah. And I want to, and I do identify as as Khaled, and I've been following the... Um, the Tyler experience yes. as well in the US and hoping that they would understand where she's coming from and what she means That's by right. that. because I had one of those moments as well okay. uh, where I was explaining that um, as far as I'm concerned there must be a difference between a, a, a cohort or a uh, yeah, a cohort of human beings that had an experience that's different from the experience of the majority who are black. Mm-hmm. So their experience was different from uh, their Botswana, different from mm-hmm. <coughs> Basutu, different from um, Amazulu, different from Amakosa and so forth. So mm-hmm. what do we call that particular group? Mm-hmm. Because we can't just say that um, coloreds are, um, coloreds are coloreds or coloreds uh, are non-black outside of identifying where do you locate them. That's right. And sometimes what happens, of course, you've got this melting pot yes. of yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm a rituals. Yeah. Oh. That's right. No part. Well, back then with my mom, my mom part. But my mom's sisters wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, because they felt like this is not for me, this is for yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. other black people. Yeah. Not us. Yes. Yeah. And now I can't help but think I have to ask you this. Yeah. 
whiskey or mkomboti? Because, I mean, Irish Posa, come on. What suck me men? Me men suck all the way. They do not discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> the history of it, though, um, is it something that you're still chasing, you're still trying to get into the roots of in terms of, you know, there's oral history. And unfortunately, yeah. we are not the best documenters of our own history. So how far did you go to try and hear where this thing comes from? I haven't gone far, I have to admit. Okay. I haven't gone far. Um, but I think we also need to debunk the myth of whether we are good keepers of history. Okay. Um, because even if it is told orally, Mm. There is still a transfer of knowledge and mm. information to another generation. And That's perhaps right. maybe what it does give us is an opportunity to interrogate um, that information as well. It's, mm. not, it's not in black and white, but yes. the information is actually there. And the reason why, when we speak about our indigenous knowledge systems, why is it that we've been able to keep those indigenous knowledge systems mm. for so long and they've been able to survive colonialism and in South Africa, colonialism of a special type? Yes. Um, but it's still there, even yeah. though it's not documented somewhere. That's right. Which tells us that there must be something about the ability to transfer knowledge, even orally. Mm. And then if you think about, I guess, um, that is the, the, the Tosa or the uh, Khoisan, if, yeah, especially the, the Tosa descendants and the Khoisan as well. Yeah. Um, those paintings on the claves, they must tell you something. Yeah. That history has been documented. That's right. And we've, sh and we've shown that in drawing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> My issue with oral is that those who know it yeah. may not live long enough <laughs> to pass it on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but at least if it is encrypted somewhere, like you said, on, on stones and is written in mm. black and white somewhere, can have access to it. Yeah, because the, you do run the risk of distortion. That's eh? right, yeah. yeah, yeah, and which is possible. Mm. You have been at a corner of a round table for a while, uh, if, 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 if I may put it that way, in a sense that here you are, Tosa Irish, identity as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, and identity, I'm talking race, I'm talking about um, sexual orientation. You had to face that too. Yeah. And your first, and that story you told well, and for those who didn't find it, where you even had to confront your father about yeah. it. Was it difficult? Yes. It was sure. very, very, very difficult because I feared that um, I could be disowned. Um, what happens if my family disowns me? And that's the risk that um, a lot of um, people who identify as gay or non-heterosexual yes. also face because there is an expectation. You know, the way that I always explain it to people is I do get sometimes why a parent would be upset or okay. a parent would be angry or a parent would um, just be disappointed because... <clears throat> I, I read it in this way that I have a son and we are socialized in a way to say that yep. this son will carry on with the surname of the family, will carry the surname of the family. Yeah. And this this son will also bear children for us mm. that will carry on the lineage yep. of, 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 of the family. So there's that expectation That's that right. is created. Sure, it's a societal expectation, but that is the expectation. Yep. So once you tell them that actually... Um, I do not identify as heterosexual. I am a homosexual, mm. um, I'm bisexual, or whichever form of sexuality you, right. um, you identify as. That sense of disappointment, I think that we must accept it, um, that it is what it is, unfortunately. But then the next hurdle is, how do I explain for them to better understand the person that I am? Doesn't mean that I stop being a saint mm. um, It doesn't mm. mean that I don't want to have children. Mm. Sure, well, in my case, whew, yeah. In yeah. my case, maybe yeah. one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but that's yeah. that's what it is. And to my surprise, my dad said to me, because I was with my person uh, on that day, yeah. my dad said to me, as long as you're happy. Wow. And, this is, the, and this is the one person you thought yeah. is going to be a hurdle. Yes. And I thought I'm going to fight. I was ready. Like, yeah, 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 I was yeah, yeah, ready yeah, to yeah, debate yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was ready to speak about nuances and understanding sexual <laughs> 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 But there was absolutely no need for that. I felt so disarmed um, wow. and humbled at the same time because also some families are different and some yeah. parents are different and respond yeah. differently to such information. What about mom? Fortunately, my mom passed on in 2010. 
um, mm. on the tenth of the tenth month, twenty ten. Wow. Yeah. So the anniversary is happening soon. Yes. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah. Condolences. Uh, actually, it's, still. Uh, it's this month. Yeah. Yeah. It's this month on the on the tenth. Yeah. That wow. she would have died, and yeah, what a moment. Um, and I remember being Sasala, eh, being Sasala, so we're to him, Yeah, back room. Back. Yes. Hey, by the way, can I just say this to all of the <laughs> landlords? <laughs> Abu Mastand. <laughs> can I just say to Abu Mastand yes, out yes. there, thank you so much for being parents to us who come from the villages, who come oh, from, wow. because that's what. That's what she gave me on that day. My uncle called me and said, "Listen, um, I have to. I, have to, I was still working at YFM at the time. And yes. said, Listen, um, I need to tell you something. Uh, can I can I share this information with you? It was early hours of the morning. And I said, sure. Like how early? Very very early. I think I was still doing breakfast um, sure. um, on um, on YFM at the time. Still reading news on YFM at the time. Yeah. And um, he shared the information that my mom has passed on. Um, I broke down and cried. I yes. had absolutely nobody yeah. um, around alone. me. Alone. Totally alone. And it was my landlord who came and comforted me. Wow. Um, and who took me to my aunt's place, um, who would then accompany me to the to the mortuary so yeah. that we can go and identify the body. I remember receiving those news about my mom. Yeah. The year was 2000. And I just left Y for Metro. Yeah. And I was doing breakfast at Metro. Mm -hmm. So you see the, the, the yeah. correlation there. And I received the news wee hours of the morning. Mm. And just as I was just about to wake up for work, yeah. that call came in. It says, hey, bruh, um, this is from my sister. It says, mm. this just happened. Mm. So right there immediately, I'm alone, stay by myself. Yeah, You have to stand up, be a man about it, and rush to mm. your sister's house and, and mm. just be there. Did you make it to work? No, I didn't. I okay. immediately called my boss. Romeo was the, the boss at the time. Mm -hmm. I said, Romeo, I can't make it because this is the news. He says, no, take all the time you need. And work understood. Yeah, they did. They did. And and it hits, right? Mm. Um, and there's, I don't think there's a there's a punch that hits deeper for your son. Um, yeah. Depending on the connection you have with your mom. Yeah. Right? So did she Yo. know before passing on um, that, look... My boy is my boy, but mm. um, this is. Um, I, th I think she, I think she 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 suspected. Um, I remember one incident. We were still living in formal settlement. It's uh, it in um, in a Kurulin, next to Palm Ridge, actually. Yes. And um, I was still a kid, of course, mm -hmm. probably like um, mid teens. Yeah. And she was having fun with the bang and back. Mama be up shy, guys. Mama be up shy. Ole la be up shy. The lumbum nandi. That's right. Be up shy. Lip like yeah. Yes, yes. And this one day, and I'm a, I'm quite a mummy's boy, you yeah. know. This one day, I was sitting out outside where she was chilling with her friends and drinking, and the friends were worried, and she was like, no, 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 lost some, lost some, lost some, lost some, um, and later on she came to me. It's like, what is it? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. I can't remember what it was. And then oh. she said to me, "Do you want to tell me that you're gay?" I, no, <laughs> no. <what> would you, <laughs> why would you even think and, and that? And then pre I mean, how do you even decode that? Because you know, what, you're what, not that self-aware. Exactly, exactly. But but I knew though. I did know that there is that I was different from the other boys. Yeah. Um, and I think even from uh, from my childhood, there were there were the hints that were dropped by the family members. Would, oh. Okay, no maralonga to okay, and uh, the derogatory terms that they would use yeah, yeah, um, back, yeah, yeah. In, back in the days. Yes, right. And 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 because of the the derogatory terms, it forced me into a closet. I think. Yes, because I think that's why the yes, closet exists. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Because yes. I mean, where else do you go? Yeah. Because this is family, right? Yeah, exactly. You should just be like water, fill in. But no. No, 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 no. You, you, because you go, you also get the it's the it's the insult, and sometimes you get tortured because you yes, you yes, uh, okay, don't want to use the term. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those, those those terms and 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 what I didn't understand at the time was, um, I don't want to be a woman. Because people identify or describe, uh, define gay as mm -hmm. from a male, male perspective. This is a man a who wants term. to be yeah. Yeah. a woman. Mm. Like, actually, no, I don't want to be a woman. I'm happy with being a boy, a boy, yeah. a, bo a boy child. 
but I just have other feelings that, right. I, that I couldn't describe. Yeah. And for that reason, for the longest time, I believed that I wasn't gay. Yeah. Um, yeah, up until a realization um, came when I met a, a teacher. By the way, I was out of school by then. Okay. Yeah, I met a teacher, a um, young teacher at the time, and I couldn't understand this man was a man. Yeah, he was a man, man. Yeah. And he said that he likes me. I'm like, I don't understand. What do you mean? You are a man. Yeah. He's like, no, but I'm gay. And then he introduced me to his other friends. Taibo, how much are you in Muslim? Taibo, how much are you in Muslim? And then I discovered that actually you can present as, or some people would say pass as straight, but you are actually gay. You identify as homosexual. The thin line between you being seen and you being co-opted to grooming. Mm-hmm. is that, I think there's a thin line there, right? Ah, <sighs> co-opted to grooming how? Like him saying, likely you are aware. Yeah. You are, you, you are self-aware. Mm-hmm. Let's say you were not. Mm-hmm. And he says, I like you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what is this? And you, well, of course, you, you don't, you know, yeah. um, you, you go with the flow and you meet others and you're like now introduced into a lifestyle that you're like, mm, mm. I was not, I didn't think I was, but hi, yeah. <laughs> let's go with it. And you're therefore being groomed to be. To be. Okay. Um, actually, I don't know if grooming is the right word because um, the, thing for, the thing about grooming is that um, it creates the impression that um, I was a non-willing participant mm. um, in this. I, I was a willing participant. Yeah. It was a revelation to yeah. me and I wanted to explore and find out more, which is different actually yeah. to um, when I was when I was still a, a kid, um, still in school, I think I was still in primary at the yeah. time. And one of our... Um, our neighbors, Sasalim Kukwin, Mara Sisim Kashin. Yes. Um, one of our neighbors' um, cousin or brother, whatever it was, uh, would, would, would molest me. No. And, and for me, Tibos was um, the weird thing about it, and I've spoken about this before, is that um, I liked it. Shit. It felt good. It felt good that this man who was older than me would touch me the way that he was touching me. Um, there was also the the arousal that comes from it, but there was also a sense of satisfaction, but also that there's somebody that actually loves me. Mm. And that's the impression that I had, not knowing actually that this person was actually molesting me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We need to talk about parenting in that space. Yeah. But before we do that, Amalang Awafani, that's where you started. Why? Yes, Amalang Awafani, because I love, 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 love. Cubs are the small, well done. Great, 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 great producer. Um, something Soweto. For me, what a flippin' lyricist that that's man right. is. He is, he is amazing. Sure, he does write a lot about, about pain, but he gets it and he, underst- and he, and he, and he, and he understands it. He's able to decode it, and man. That, and that song speaks to that. That's Amalang right. Awafani. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Top ten and ten, Baba. <laughs> you have a choice between two songs. Okay. Da, 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 da. Jennifer Hudson and Jahim, which one? No, that's unfair. I know. <laughs> I know. No, but I that's know. unfair. I know. That is unfair. Ish. Ish. Jahim because of my mom of course um, but I have to give it to my girl Jehad are you able to sing the song for someone now yes 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 uh, and by choice Kulufelo Lefort Mukhane the love of my life. Oh wow! Ah, uh, th- I, I I don't think that I would have achieved all of the things that I have achieved so far if he wasn't there. Okay. And you know the the difficulty of the work that we do yes. and some of the stories that we cover and sometimes the difficult conversations that we have. Yeah. I know that I go home to somebody that I can debrief with. I, I normally say absolutely honest with someone who works in news is like a psychologist. Mm-hmm. They need to go somewhere to debrief. Yes, right? yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. I totally agree with you, and and he has been that for me. Um, like you know, when I gave when I gave my ten songs, it was like, are you sure that these are your? Ten? <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> because he knows me so well. Yeah, There's a song yeah, that I didn't yeah, include, yeah. Nam Tlang Kos. And like, where's Nam Tlang Kos? Like, yeah. well, baby, you've got Jahim there. So Jahim will cover this page. <laughs> and now Jahim didn't even play. I chose That's right. Jennifer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, before I ask you my next question, JR has something to say. Yo, Uncle T. Yeah, no, you, you're sitting with that man. Uh, I used to work with that guy at um, at Kasi FM, and uh, uh, I remember I remember one day I said to him, "Wena, you don't belong here. You're gonna go very soon." And I think um, a week after, and he was gone. And uh, also he was Kunji King, baby sa inkonje. Begum kapi, begum kapi, mshato inwa ma maria fe dale antom fan alrin. But hey man, life goes on, man. But I watch you grow, man. Keep on keeping, man. Keep on shining, my brother. Thank you, Uncle T, for bringing that guy. That guy is going to talk the whole show. You going? You only going to play five or six songs. He talks a lot, that guy, man. But well done to him, man. I watch him grow. He's doing good. Well done, my brother. Oh, when I was in Toronto to interview, I'm fan of Faraki Aldrin. That boy, I used to work with him uh, at Josie FM. I think uh, when we heard him audition the first time, because I used to be a programs manager there, we knew where this boy is going places. So yeah, he's one of my all-time favorites. And I'm, I'm sad that he left SAFM, you know. But yeah, I kick into an grandy. Oh, Uncle T, Uncle T, on the street on the Zona Shati here. Beautiful soul we have there, Aldrin Sapia. Very, very good friend of mine. Beautiful uh, broadcaster he is. He's overcome so many things that a lot of people wouldn't dare to overcome or still trying to overcome. He's a beautiful soul. Um, you're a beautiful soul, Uncle T, as well. <laughs> Um, I love him and thank him for being him. And uh, apart from waking up at 3 a.m., well, welcome to our life. And and looking great at 5 on the A and still looking great on the street after that. Um, I love him. I love him. He's a good friend. He's a good brother. He's, he's a good chief mourner. Please ask him about us being chief mourners on the street on the A. <laughs> chief Zola's, No, that's Zola's role. Zola is a chief mourner. If you can go into Zola's Instagram page now yeah. and scroll through his Instagram page, <laughs> there's like RIPs after her. <laughs> oh, that's why the chief mourner. So before, as we were playing the song, um, uh, you say to me, hey, hey, why is the channel uh, not on Newsroom Africa? Yes, well, yes. I was watching my colleague, Ayanda Tanzi, Yeah, and I uh, have to uh, because, you know, you keep it in the family. <laughs> But I'm always, uh, always on Newsroom Africa, and I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Newsroom Africa for me reminds me of 1997, mm. when new radio stations came to the fore, YFM in particular, yeah. <clears throat> changing the game, right? Mm. So for me, that's a version of YFM, wow. if you will. The bravery, the freshness, how they approach news. Uh, you can watch it the whole day. Mm. And that for me is exactly what we need. Yeah. You know, because you can't tell. I mean, we know each, each and every uh, channel has its own agenda, right? Mm-hmm. But there's something about, I think, 4 or 5 that just says, hey, it's a song killer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's why um, uh, we support it so mm-hmm. much because it's a, it's, for me, it's a sign of what's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And please continue to support us, Channel 405. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do you know do you know when when I got the, another call yes. uh, because there were a couple that took place uh, okay. before I eventually decided that actually now I want, I want to go to New York. That Zoom. must be difficult. Um, sure. Yes, it was it was a tough one. Yeah. Um, but I remember speaking to Tabile and I said to Tabile, I am happy. Mm. I am happy. What what joy it is to wake up in the morning and go and do what you want to do. Yes. And actually be happy while doing it. That's right. And you wake up in the early hours of the morning while people are still getting ready for bed. Some of them bump into me and they're like, you know, I'm naked mm. in my bedroom <laughs> getting ready for work. Yeah. As you are wearing suits. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, I love the channel and I love that we're able to push boundaries. Um, and Wonderful. now also a different, almost like a different vision that Mapi has come, come, come with for the channel. Mm. And you would see most of our anchors going out more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that also gives us some level of proximity to our audience. That's right. That's which is saying. very important. Like I said, future, man. Yeah. Future yeah. right there. Thank you. 
I want you to talk to a parent raising an Aldrin. Yeah. Struggling with it. Because they're still, you know, living according to societal norms. Forgetting society is from, it's, it's mm. basically gets the formula from family. Yeah. So one is, um, and I've made this point before, the, the defense of um, my community and the people that I'm part of should never be, um, don't get involved in who sleeps with who. Because the assumption that that creates is that you are only gay or homosexual once you're an adult. Mm. But I'm a child. I'm not sleeping with anyone. How are you going to defend me if you're That's going to right. use the defense of allow Ooh. people to sleep with who they want to sleep with? I'm a child. I'd say to you, um, give me love. Show me that um, at least within my home that there is a safe space that has been created because we can't expect that from society, unfortunately. Right. But once one home gets it right and the messaging that that then sends to the neighbors is that lo umdwana wala, umdwana, and my mom would always come to my defense, yeah. even though at the time, I'm sure be like, hey, lo, mm. but she'd always come, <clears throat> she, she, she would always Family come first. to my defense. Ex yeah. Exactly. But have the conversation because I think also there's a possibility of being confused in the moment yeah. around um, sexual identity and what my sexual identity is, open up the space. And maybe today the child would say that actually I think that um, that I uh, that I identify as gay. And the next day they'll be like, actually I think that I'm straight. It's okay to go through that journey with them and hold their hands. Remember that they are also mm. trying to, 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 uh, to find who they are. Yeah. But at least be that ear that they know that this is a person that I can call up and say that I'm a bit confused, please help me out. And if you do have friends, because some of us do, if you do yep. have friends who are um, homosexual or part of the LGBTI um, Q plus community, um, ask them for advice as well. Mm. What can I do and how do I approach this? Because it also does need a different form of parenting, I believe. You do sound good on radio. Uh, <laughs> what are you trying to do, my brother? What are you trying to do? <laughs> Just say. <clears throat> A decision was taken and the decision <clears throat> will be kept. You see, what I like about decisions, right? Yeah. Um, and I, you're, a, you're a good man, a wise man. Thank you. So that mind can change. Well, yes, yes, yes. That's yes, what yes. they say about wise men. Wise people always change their minds. If there's new, if there's new information that is brought to the table. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> The next agenda. Mm -hmm. Every time June, International Pride Month. October, National Pride Month. Both, there must be a march, mm -hmm. raise the flag, and so on, right? But for me, I still have to ask, are these making moves in the right circles? Because, number one, is government finally, because that's where the law, the law give us and yeah. the lawmakers are, right? Do you feel there is a move where you feel like I don't have to even explain myself anymore. Ganjan. Because I feel every time if you're part of the uh, pride flag, yeah. you have to explain yourself. Yeah. Right? Is that even necessary? Why can't you just be? Uh, Isn't that the next agenda? Angazi, <clears throat> angazi. Because again, the context of it that we live in a society that, um, that um, is... Pres the, pre the presumption is that majority are heterosexual. Yes. Uh, and for somebody like me, for instance, um, the so-called you, you pass as straight is that the, uh, the coming mm. out process never stops. Yeah. Um, so okay. every time that I enter spaces, um, let's say sometimes you'd have maybe a somebody who hits on you and you're yeah. like, no, no, <clears throat> excuse me. You're like, no, 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 me no, no, sharp. Um, but then there's also the question about, but why? And like, no, mm. but I'm gay. Oh, okay, no sharp, you know? Mm. So you always have the coming up process mm. um, that is taking place, even in the professional spaces That's right. um, that you're going, going at. I, do, I don't think that Pride Month and um, some of the movements that we have should ever stop. Okay. Because the essence of it is that we're speaking here about a human right, a human right to existence, mm. a human right to identity. And if we say that Human Rights Day is celebrated every year, then That's surely right. a pride should also have the same yeah. um, level of, we are saying that we are celebrating being uh, being queer, but we are also saying that we need you to recognize what is happening to our community. Yeah. And like I said earlier on, the coming out process doesn't stop. But then you also have the, the attacks that will happen 
on gay people um, especially with uh, with lesbians I know that people don't like to mm-hmm. use the term mm-hmm. um, corrective rape because corrective rape assumes that there's something wrong, wrong with you exactly. and therefore exactly. you know yeah. but that is what, what 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 is also happening but I would love to see um, and thank you so much for this opportunity as well thank you yeah. I would love to see us um, tell more positive stories yes about gay people Mm. Um, and about their experiences. Um, like, for instance, they're starting a family, the um, where do I want to work, or the things that they are achieving outside of That's just a beautiful next agenda. The negative. That's yeah. right. That's right. Those positive stories need to be told yes. more. Yes, yes. Brought to platforms like this. Yes, and we thank you. We, I appreciate this so, so, so much because we are telling a story of um, the boy who's sitting behind this mic is a homosexual, um, but we're also telling the story about where he exists and how he exists in those different spaces, mm. being at home, being with his partner, or being at work. That's right. Yeah. How come with a surname like Saint Pierre, mm. Saint Pierre, <laughs> eloquent, yeah. you still felt the need you needed to study further? I mean, already this thing was given, man. Eish. But you still went back Yo. and studied more. Why? I like Coach Pito Musimani for this reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Um, it actually goes back to the point that you raised a bit earlier on, and that is talent is not enough. Wow. Talent is not enough. And I remember listening to one interview when he was in Egypt with Al Ahli, and he was speaking about having some of the technical people that he was leaving with as well. And he emphasized the point about, yes, you can have the talent. The talent is great, but the talent needs nurturing. Mm. And you need to hone that talent. Yeah. Um, but because you are the one who holds the talent, your your purview and your perspective of your talent is not as good as people who are actually watching you and the ones who will be able to coach you. Ah. So talent is not enough. And I, I remember one of my uh, one of my friends, TD, saying that, no, friend, why are you going back to school? You know, you're yeah. already great. You're already doing so much. And like, <laughs> my question. Well, and what? What education does is that it gives you confidence to walk into a room with your head held up high. That angenanga lang yeah. chance. And I also have the gift on top of that. That's right. Yeah. What's next? What is next? Hmm. Lopang, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Lopang is uh, uh, is Aldrin's uh, trusted producer. Producer so, extraordinary. Exactly. <laughs> so now I have Tato by my side. So Aldrin's like, no, I ain't going there without Lopang. So yeah. she's right here. Lopang is Hello, right Lopang. here. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Lopang. Dim long, dim long. Yeah. Um, so I've, li- I've recently launched, uh, well, I registered a foundation. Oh. Um, yeah. And I want to focus on uh, one, how do we instill. Um, education on finances for every single person whether young or old but start them at least when they are young um, I hope that there's a way to come up, with a, come up with a curriculum that teaches children money from a very young age, even though they don't have the money themselves. I come from an informal settlement. I used to say this thing that, um, how do you teach me how to save money when I don't have, have money? Yes. Yeah. So we need to now find the alternative. What is the alternative, but still teach the child what money is and how money works. So look, look, and as an example, I love, I love property. And... You find, uh, especially in Ngabotak, Ukoko Utlala Endlin, a seven bedroom house, Nipumila Nonge. Why is Ukoko living in such a big house um, when she's alone, when she can actually downgrade um, and we can find another place where Ukoko can stay while using that money? Because mm. sometimes we sit on money, your house mm. is totally mm. paid off, mm. Mm. you're sitting on close to a million rand, but you don't know that. Because nobody has taught you that actually debt itself is not that bad if you know how to use the money. So I that's what that. I want to do with my foundation. And I hope that I'm able to get there. And then, of course, also training people who want to get into broadcasting. As soon as it's launched, please let us know. All right. You have a choice again. I, it gets unfair. Yes, yes, but Sheila. Yes, but Sheila. Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah. Tandy Summers, why? <gasps> no ways. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
No, 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 Why? Because. Ah, Life is about okay. difficult choices, my friend. Okay, I'm so sorry. And I can explain, <laughs> rationalize it. <laughs> yes, you the can. The reason why we're going with this one is because the previous song. Yeah. My phone even fell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The previous song uh, came from America. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to bring it back home. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. We'll give you a taste of that song. From her brand new album, uh, Sankofa. And, but before we go there. Prati, I want to find out studio, no, no. Um, child or out here, ring on you, keep up, you know. Kia kuzla ling out here, liki kazlaka. Just tell him, Morikiri, I'm proud of you, Mfanaka. All the best. Keep on going, Mfanaka. Never look back. Hurry and that. Who's that? Uh, that's 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 my cousin who actually at my uncle's funeral not so long ago and was saying that his son doesn't believe that we are actually related. related. Yeah. So I must go and surprise the son. Oh. <laughs> wow, Uncle T. We went to the same high school with Calvin. He was my senior, like way, way, way my senior. But he was always like receiving awards every year. He like he inspired some of us subtly, you know. And we were inspired. Yeah, like we were very proud of him as a school because your Nadi Buta, Prati, Nadi Buta, the the awards every year. How can Aldrin, Aldrin? Yeah, he's he's going places. Look at him now. Very proud. Very proud. We celebrate you, man. Keep shining. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. We love watching you. Uh, you are our voice. You are that exactly that person that Oprah described that. You are sitting in a position of power and you do ask the tough questions and thank you for that. Thank you so much. I was telling somebody that I believe that I am the moment. There you are. Yeah. He's not going away. He's going to give us a feedback or two around the blind spot. It's coming up. <laughs>